We are back with the sequel to indie developed horror game Lucius made by Shiver Games, the Finnish indie developer for this game. Not only is Lucius back, but so is also Detective McGruffin in all his glory as the newfound servant of Lucifer and his son. Is the sequel as campy as the first game? And is it just as bad? Or perhaps better? We're about to find out in this review of Lucius 2, The Prophecy. Beware of spoilers. It starts off with McGruffing, summarizing the first game's ending and telling us that he met with Lucifer and was tasked with protecting Lucius from the shadows and simply helping him along the way. He also let us know what took place after the events of the first game and what place we will find Lucius in. A psychiatric ward in the hospital. Things have changed from the first game. All of Lucius' abilities have disappeared with the exception of the memory erasement. Other than that, Lucius controlled the same as it did in the first game. Its lost abilities does come back in the form of three skill trees, in which you can put skill points into each time you level up. You no longer have one big world to run around in, but rather have structured levels with generic people to kill in various ways of your choosing. There are some unique character kills still, but I end up missing almost all of them. I will tackle each level up to you, but if you end up getting caught, you have a chance of setting yourself free by stunning the captor by the cost of some of your health. All active skills cost mana to use, while some, like the mind control, slowly drain mana over time, when you are in control of another person. This is the easiest way to kill people in the game, especially in the early hospital levels where you can mind control people having them walk down the edge of the open hospital hatches, make them fall to their death. That was my favorite way of killing them until I unlocked the ability to set flammable items on fire and created flame spots where mind control victims would go to catch on fire and burn alive. Funny enough, you also get tossed to kill Lucius' surrogate father for real in the hospital. You refill your health and mana by going to the men and women's bathrooms. As you get further in the game, the maps get bigger and more complex, but as the game is an immersive sim to some extent, you can usually easily find a way to kill each person in each level. You do get different items in this game too. Some used as distractions, while others can be combined into bombs or poisoned food products. Poisoning coffee was an easy way to kill the hospital staff for example. The game unfortunately has less horror elements, but you do get the bike from the first game, and it has some poor tank controls just the way we love it. The game only has one boss fight this time around, but the story play a bigger role in this game, so let's go through it. Quick side note, this game has an easter egg where you recruit four famous horror movie villains into your ranks as babies. After McGruffing has summarized the plot of the first game and you take control of Lucius at the hospital, you are tasked to find a nun going nuts about the prophecy of Lucifer's return to the earth. As well as locating your followers in the hospital who seem to stray away from Lucius and start following someone else. After finding your surrogate father and finishing him off for good, you track down more information on what's going on about a certain town. You soon learn there's another boy, just like you, named Isaac, and you call McGruffing on the phone as you find your own clothes, as well as his phone number. You meet up with him at the hospital morgue and he takes you away from there, driving you into the town of Ludlow, where Isaac has been seen. You now have to compete with Isaac, proving your position next to Lucifer in his second coming. So you now compete in completing the tasks, in creating the rapture with the help of McGruffin, until you clash with Isaac while releasing the horse of Locust, blacking out the sun. As you have succeeded with doing more tasks, completing the coming of the rapture over Isaac, you head back to Ludlow to try and mask yourself as one of the refugee survivors on the bus out. Before you make it for the bus, however, you have one final confrontation against Isaac, as you kill him and prove yourself as Lucifer's one true son. This is where the game ends, and you can kill all the developers at the bus, including Lucifer himself. So, in the first game, the music was plain awful and repeating to no end, and in the remake, the music was amazing. What is the case with this game then? The music is actually rather good in this game. While it does have a limited amount of tracks, just like the other two games, they are a lot better than the first game's music, if you are to compare. The music tracks invigorate the annoyance of always being one step behind Isaac, as well as not knowing what's going on. 
The tune that plays on the radio in Ludlow is rather catchy, but the theme known as Sad Saxophones is the best in the game if you ask me. It portrays your struggle of always falling short of Isaac, oh so well, which is why I love it, but also because of the overall melancholy of it. So is this game good or bad, and does it hold up as art like the original, or comparing gameplay with the remake? In overall design and navigation, this game is a lot better than the first game. It's a lot easier to find your way in each level, with the easy to read map as well as the mission objectives in each level. What it does suffer from instead, at least early on, is all the keys you need to collect to unlock doors, which takes up important inventory space. However, as you can tackle every level in any way you like, doing the objectives in any order, it does give you a lot of freedom which opens up the game's replayability. However, as each level is just that, a level, it does make the game lose some charm in learning the ins and outs like you did with the mansion in the first game. The lack of having unique people to kill and unique death scenes to follow them makes the game lose some of the importance campiness the first game had. Don't get me wrong though, the game's store is still camp, just not as much as the first game. The music is a lot better, which helps this game immensely as well. The story is easy to follow, which gives you less of a mystery to uncover, which is unfortunate, but you do still have some mysteries to find out. You quickly find what killing method works best for you, and stick to it for as long as you can. The boss fights against Isaac is easy to comprehend, as it combi combines both puzzle elements with action elements even if I had a hard time figuring out how to get to the shotgun. The remake did the boss fights the best so far though. The game has made plenty of improvements even if it did at the cost of its camp. This is clearly the best Lucius game so far and it will stay like that until I check out the third game in the series. When that will be is for me to know and for you to figure out, but the hints are right there in front of you for those who pay attention. For now, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this review. Let me know what you thought by leaving a comment down below. Don't forget to join the Frog Squad by subscribing and hitting that bell icon. Have a great day everyone. Hello everybody, thank you very much for watching this review of Lucius 2, The Prophecy, for the PC. If you enjoyed it, as of course, subscribe and become part of the Frog Squad. Otherwise, subscribe by pressing the frog icon up here. Or check out uh, another review down here, or that's a playlist down here. With that said, thank you for watching. I hope to see you next video. Take care for everybody, and bye!